What's up guys, welcome back to another video on the Concerned Sports Fan YouTube channel. Today guys, we are talking about the NFL Draft, who is going to go number one overall, what teams are picking what players, who is going to end up where, and what to expect. Now, let's get into it. People's lives will change. Families, friends, and loved ones will come together. Dreams will come true. People will celebrate. Throughout the years, we've seen some good players evolve into great ones. We've also seen some struggle and wait and wait and wait some more. But overall, each and every player has one thing in common. Draft day is one of the best times of their lives. It's a celebration, but most importantly, it's time to prepare. Because after draft day, it's going to be a start of a new beginning. Enjoy your new home. Be the greatest version of you. Keep working hard. You didn't make it this far to relax. So if you follow the NFL draft and follow football in general, you kind of already know who the preferred number one overall pick is. And like no surprise, from years after years, it's another quarterback. Now, does a quarterback deserve to go number one overall this year? And if it's that quarterback, should it be Kyler Murray? In my opinion, he doesn't. I don't honestly think Kyler Murray deserves to go number one overall. And just for a few reasons. The hype around this kid is great. I understand. Like, he's a Heisman Trophy winner, broke multiple records in college, led his team to the playoffs. But it it's a college system. And unfortunately, guys, college systems are made to make players play simpler. A lot of these coaches who have these players they want to make a system that's easy for their players so that way they can just get the ball out of their hands throw it as far as possible because they have the fastest receivers and the hardest throwing arm and it just looks good it, it just it's a college football is a game that's meant to look good it's meant to look appealing people should just throw the ball 50 yards it's very simple fundamental plays that just happen to go big and Kyler Murray, I understand, is a huge talent. Two-sport athlete was drafted in the first round by the Oakland A's. And I was kind of looking forward to him to come to the A's. But in the back of my mind, I kind of already knew he was going to be picking football after this. Um, and which he did, but that does not mean he should go number one overall. If you really want to get a good number one overall pick, you get Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa is a complete all-around player. Now, he plays on the defensive side of the ball, which is on the other side of the quarterback, but he's a strong fundamental player that you can put in your system right away and you will have no issues. Now, with the quarterback, yes, you're going to have a long offseason with them. You're going to teach them the playbook. You're going to teach them the routes. You're going to teach them on uh, who to throw, where to throw, why to throw, and stuff like that, but you don't always get the best picks when it comes to quarterbacks. Now, I understand that quarterbacks are the players that run the whole team, but just look at it. The Arizona Cardinals already have a quarterback. They have Josh Rosen. He was selected in last year's draft after they traded up I think about four spots just to get him. Now, if you're telling me you're going to do the exact same thing this year and pick a quarterback when you already have a quarterback on your roster, one or two things is going to happen. One, you're going to have a very bad blood between two quarterbacks because Josh Rosen deserves he wants to be there and Kyler Murray is the number one overall pick hotshot who thinks just because he was selected number one overall is going to get the spot. Or two, Josh Rosen gets pissed, he demands a trade, and you trade him away, but guess what? You don't get back what you traded away. You're not going to get back the first round pick you traded away last year. You're not going to get a first round back for him just because everybody knows you're in this tough situation and you just need to get rid of him. So it's a kind of a lose-lose situation whether way you go. Now, but there are some scenarios that prove that Kyler Murray could go number one overall. And if he does, this is the way I see it playing out. Kyler Murray goes number one overall, as people expect, and Nick Bosa goes number two overall to the San Francisco 49ers. And if that happens, then it's smooth sailing from then on. Quinn and Williams goes to the Jets, and the Raiders pick up Josh Allen. Now, this draft class is a very defensive loaded draft class. A lot of these players that you see going in the first round are going to be on the defensive side of the ball, predominantly in the lineman and linebacker category, just because it's stacked like that, guys. This whole draft class is stacked defensively, and it's going to be a safe bet to take a defensive player this year because the talent pool is just that big. Now, if Kyler Murray doesn't go number one overall, what I can see happening is Nick Bosa gets picked number one overall, 
and this is where all hell breaks loose. I can see a lot of teams wanting to trade up to the number two spot, number three spot, just because they know they're going to have a shot at getting Kyler Murray. And when teams get desperate to want to trade up, they start to trade big. They start to trade away future draft picks, first round, second round, third round, their best player if they have to, just to be able to get that first crack at signing a player who was supposed to go number one overall. We saw with the Redskins, we saw when they tried to get uh, RG3. There's no doubt in my mind they could do it again this year. They are a team that's looking for a quarterback pretty desperately, just like the Giants, just like the Jaguars, and just like a few other teams out there who wouldn't mind moving up that many slots just to pick them up. Now, if that does happen and people start to trade back out of the first round, this is where things get interesting because because this draft class is so talented with defensive players you can start your trade back little by little acquire more draft capital you get an extra pick in the second round maybe an extra pick in the third round next year first round pick next year and that's what the raiders did last year guys they traded back in the draft got a couple extra picks this year they have three first round picks because we traded away khalil mack and amari cooper so we have three first round picks this year and it wouldn't surprise me if they traded out of the first round with one of those picks just because they wanted to get more capital because teams will be desperate to move up to pick up players and there's no telling what they're willing to give up to get a certain player but if teams don't start to move up it's going to be pretty simple nick bosa goes number one overall the niners either end up with quinn and williams or they trade out uh, the Jets key to get Montez Sweat, Josh Allen, or the Raiders could end up with either one of those guys, or including even Ed Oliver. Now, the thing about this draft class is because it's loaded with defensive talent, a lot of these teams that are looking for quarterbacks are going to struggle to find some. We only have about four or five big name players who are going to be quarterbacks and who deserve to go in the first round. I mean, I don't really think a lot of these quarterbacks deserve ever go in the first round this year. This draft class, when it comes to quarterbacks, was not as good as it was last year and potentially won't as good as it will be next year. Last year, we had the likes of Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, and Lamar Jackson all go in the first round to teams that really, really needed quarterbacks. Now, if you're a team that's looking for a quarterback this year, I honestly suggest you wait because we only have the likes of Kyler Murray, Dwayne Haskins, Drew Locke, and Daniel Jones. Four quarterbacks who one of them was a Heisman winner and another one led the, their team to a Big Ten championship. I don't think the talent stacks up to what it was net last year. And next year, we also have the likes of Tua Tagovailoa coming out, Jake Fromm, and Justin Herbert. Big talents, and honestly, all three of those combined are a lot better than the five that are coming out this year. So like I mentioned before, guys, my favorite part of the draft is the unexpectancy. I like to see that a player who was supposed to go number one overall doesn't, and then all hell breaks loose when, the, when it comes to trades and when it comes to making deals. Because once that happens, the floodgates start to open. One player who was supposed to go number three is now sitting at number seven. Guess what? Somebody who was looking at number 12 and could potentially go up a, a couple spots to get them, they will do that. They will go up and try to get that player and if that player doesn't work out, they could potentially be setting their team back another five years, or they could potentially make a big jump in the, in the year after. Draft capital is going to be huge this year, guys, because we have teams like the Patriots, the Jets, who have about 11 or 12 picks this year, and can easily trade out of those picks just to get a couple extra players, or just to get even more picks in later rounds. If you have three second round picks, you don't need all three. Yeah, you would like to acquire talent that way, because cheap talent or you could do this you could give up one of those second round picks get a couple extra third round picks and then you have even more you, you flip one pick and you get three more so yeah the math works that way a team that kind of worked out in its favor when it comes to draft picks is the raiders guys my oakland raiders have three first round picks this year and i wouldn't be surprised if it's an all defensive class these three first round picks could either make or break our season for the next year or two because this is our last season in oakland and i would really like to have them succeed while they're here just because if they want to go to Vegas and succeed, they're going to have to make very, very smart, intelligent, great picks with this in this year's draft. Now, these analysts a lot of times say, well, you know what? This person deserves to go here. This person's going to go there. This person's going to go there. And they have it figured out. But I love the look on their faces when the person they thought was going to go number 10 overall ends up going in the late third round or, or the person who's going to go number one overall is going to go like top 10 because they have that dumb look on their face and they're thinking to themselves, what the hell was I thinking? Or they really do get upset because a lot of times they honestly think that their opinion is the opinion that matters the most when it doesn't. They're not in the war rooms with the GMs. They're not in the meetings with those players and they don't actually see what other coaches see. They don't see the talent. They don't see the potential. And a lot of times these analysts do end up getting it wrong. So don't always listen to the analysts. If you're a coach, if you're a player, listen to yourself, listen to your gut and make the right decision. Now, as I was talking about the Raiders and their three picks, uh, yeah, like I said, this could be a potential all defensive draft class this year for us guys because on the defensive side of the ball we are struggling pretty heavily at the moment on the offensive side of the ball luckily we've picked up antonio brown uh jalen richard has signed an extension with us tyrell williams our offensive line is looking pretty solid for the next couple years with the addition of trent williams and maybe another pick this year in the draft 
Uh, but unfortunately, we did lose Marshawn Lynch to retirement. So Beast Mode, thank you so much for what you've done to Oakland as a player. And thank you so much for what you do to Oakland as a person. Uh, the community work that you do and the time that you put into it is very, very great. I doubt you will see this, but if you do, man, uh, congratulations on retirement and enjoy that rocking chair. Hold it down for the Bay, rapping Oakland. If it wasn't for that granddaddy smoking, that's what I mean. For sure, that's what I mean. For sheets, that's what I mean. For sure, that's what I mean. For sheets, that's what I mean. For sure, that's what I mean. For sheets, that's what I mean. For sure, that's what I mean. For sheets. But yeah, Oakland Raiders need to make some smart picks. But that's how it goes. But. Guys, these are just some of my opinions. These are just some of my takes on what I think is going to happen in this year's draft. Uh, some small trades, maybe some potential big moves could happen. But let me know in the comments down below, who do you think is going to go number one overall? Who do you want your team to take in the draft this year? Uh, do you think the draft is even even going to be worth watching this year because you don't think the talent is that great? Or you think it's going to be one of the best talents that we've had in recent memories? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to turn on post notifications. And also, don't forget to follow my Instagram page, The Concerned Sports Fan. I will be leaving a link down below in the description. And also my Twitter account, Sports Concerned, also will be down below in the description. And without further ado, guys, thank you guys again for watching this video, and I'm out.